Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. May 21st is the date. In studio with me today, L.A. Marzulli and Richard Shaw. Hi, guys. Hey, hey, Gary. They're here for a very specific reason, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, specifically, a, a new video, which is just going to be something you'll want to see. But before we talk about that, I just want to re reassure our viewers <coughs> that Prophecy in the News escaped the tornado that hit Oklahoma City and Moore, Oklahoma yesterday. It was a huge tornado, and I'm sure you've seen it in the news, and uh, maybe you've been a little bit concerned. Well, we escaped uh, any kind of complications save one, and that is that our mail may not flow as smoothly as it has been flowing in the past because the Moore uh, City Post Office was damaged in uh, the tornado, and so some of our mail comes through there. So if you experience some difficulty uh, in mail transmission, uh, that's probably the reason. But I just want to tell you that thanks be to the Lord, we escaped any harm here at Prophecy in the News. Our studios, our offices are in uh, pristine shape, and uh, we're going to continue on as usual. All of our personnel are in good shape, and uh, we appreciate your prayers. Fellas, back in town today, because we've been making a series of programs on your new DVD called Watchers 6. Mm -hmm. Watchers 6, uh, and I've said this several times, but I'll say it again, it eclipses any of the other videos you've ever made. It really does. It's first class professional all the way, and dramatic. I mean, this is a popcorn muncher, if <laughs> I may put it that way. Great. Don't watch this video without a big tub of popcorn, but, and you're going to be eating it all. I Turn guarantee. cell phones off. Cell phones off. That's right. Uh, uh, I must say, and by the way, Richard Shaw is the producer and director of this video. Uh, Richard has a real eye for bringing to you the dramatic, the, the view that you, you would see if you were there yourself watching all of these things unfold. And, and Richard, I have to congratulate you. You've done a great job. Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm surprised it looks so good considering 90% of the film was handheld because <laughs> that was the only way we could shoot it because we were in such remote locations. The scenery is beautiful. The sound is great. But more than that, the message, and here I go to L.A. Marzulli, the message is right on point. This book, by the way, called On the Trail of the Nephilim, documents the, the, uh, the expedition, let's call it an expedition, okay. that you made to Peru. The reasons why you made the expedition, the hypothesis behind the expedition, all of it comes together in Watchers 6. Tell us about it. Well, we, the, the, the nexus for this whole thing, our whole adventure, our expedition to go down to Peru was really just exploring this one book by co-authored by Brian Forrester, who later became our guide. And Brian was uh, handling these elongated skulls, very similar to this one that we see here, in a place called Paracas, Peru. So I immediately emailed Richard and go, oh my gosh, you've got to <laughs> see this thing. This guy, I think, has got a real Nephilim skull. So. One thing led to another, and we, we mounted an expedition, and we went down to Paracas, Peru. And lo and behold, we walk into the museum, and there we saw not only one skull like this, but literally about 40 to 50 different skulls. Uh, now, are they Nephilim skull? That's our hypothesis. We can't say with 100% certainty, but this Paracas people show up within the timeline that's found in the, in the biblical narrative where Joshua and Caleb go into the promised land. Paracas people show up about 3,500 years ago. That coincides with that moving into the promised land. This skull is anomalous because it only has one parietal plate instead of the two that it nor a normal human being should have. There are other anomalies. This is probably a female. Look at the large ridge here on the top of the frontal plate. This is not the result of cradle headboarding where you take two pieces of wood on this side, a piece of wood or, or cloth or something rigid on this side, and bind the head of the infant, and you get this shape. This is completely different because it only has one parietal plate. This is what we discovered in Paracas and, and other things in Peru, other just unbelievable sites and, and megalithic um, uh, structures that we saw in Peru. So it was really the trip of a lifetime. But we went there because we, we said, oh my gosh, we can't see anything like this in the Americas. 
but we can see it in Peru, and this goes against the Darwinian paradigm. Well, one really thing does. that really ignited this trip was LA had a, a connection on Catalina Island that was supposed to have a ledger of names of people that had dug up giant bones in their backyard at the turn of the century, mm -hmm. last century. And so we thought, well, that sounds interesting. Maybe we can follow those clues to their ultimate conclusion. And we were about ready to go. And they said we couldn't, couldn't see the ledger. Yeah. We couldn't film it yeah. or look at it. Interesting. As though there's a lid put on this. Mm -hmm. Look, there, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that this is very deliberate. There has been a lid that's been put on this information. American people have no idea what was found in this country. And that's why we went to Peru. But here's, here's the rub. Even in Peru, the, the window is, is, is closing. You know, the window to, to these artifacts. The museums now have, for instance, in Lima, there was supposed to be this museum with the two golden mummies. These, these were mummies with a gold um, a apparel on, were well over nine feet tall. They were seated on, on thrones, gone. Can't see them anymore. The entire uh, uh, elongated skull collection at one of the other museums, gone. The whole place boarded up with drywall, and there is no... Uh, ex exhibition anymore. So what happens in Peru is that the little private museums to get people to come to see them put all this stuff out. Oh. And so that's where we went. They're the places that have the elongated skulls because they like the visitors. And, and it's a good thing you saw these when you did. Yeah, yeah and you're not going to get visitors just to come see broken pieces of pottery. You gotta have something interesting. Well, Watcher 6 is the ultimate travelogue, folks. Uh, it, it goes down to Peru and who knows anything about Peru? You know, we really never studied Peru in grade school. But when you see it in this travelogue, you'll say, there's another world there. And furthermore, it's a world that raises some questions. And the answers to those questions can be found in the Bible. This is what I like about it, because I'm interested in the Bible. I'm interested in Bible prophecy. The prophecies concerning the giants in the latter days are very well known. And if we believe ourselves to be in the latter days right now, which we do, we have to just come right out and say it, then certain things should be popping up and becoming visible once again. And it, it appears that you're maybe an agent in making that happen. <laughs> I think both of us would like to uh, you know, put that badge of honor on ourselves, or if you just bestowed it upon us, but that's really why we do Watchers, is to wake up um, the folks not only in the church, but a lot of people who don't know about Jesus, don't know about biblical prophecy. That's what the, the Watchers series really is about, to get people talking. Look at the evidence, look at what's going on. We're not in Kansas anymore, folks. Time to wake up. We certainly are not in Kansas anymore, and uh, no pun intended, we've just <laughs> been through a great tornado. We're, <laughs> we're in Oklahoma, we're safe from that tornado. Thanks be to the Lord. Uh, again, I want to repeat uh, the, the message that we had up front in this update. We're all well here at Prophecy in the News, and we're going to go right on functioning as the Lord allows. Our mail may be a little slow for a while. wanted to make sure you understood that. So uh, uh, that may be one of the side effects of this, of this tornado, but we are safe from it. We're going to offer you this, what I consider to be an amazing travelogue, that Richard and L.A. have put together. Uh, it's a, an hour and 20 minute DVD, the likes of which you have never seen before. It's going to open a world to your eyes. We haven't even talked about the architecture. Mm -hmm. You'll see architecture in, in this, uh, in which by the way, L.A. believes to be antediluvian, before the flood. Architecture that could not be duplicated today in any way. Uh, Watcher 6, 1995 plus shipping and handling of course you're watching this uh, on the internet you can have all the information on how to order this and the book on the trail of the nephilim uh, we have an 800 number you can call you can order uh, through our online bookstore by the way the two 49.90 together and you know if you call uh, an 800 number, by the way, which you have right there in front of your eyes, we'll also include as part of the Nephilim Trail Package this seven-hour lecture series by L.A. Marzulli called The Cosmic Chess Match. That's a lot of information for just a few minutes. Let's go back. 
I'm going to run just a little long today. and That doesn't bother me because here on uh, uh, this particular uh, update, if we run a few minutes over, it's worth it. <laughs> uh, let's talk for a moment about the giants in the Bible and then hop forward to the 21st century. Make that connection, L.A. That's what you're doing. Well, yeah, in, in, in the trail of a Nephilim and even in March 6, we alluded to this, but we know from Genesis 6 that there was a, a, a union between fallen angels and the women of earth, which created a hybrid being known as the Nephilim. Uh, the text to me is very clear. It says the Nephilim were on the earth and also afterwards. And that said when uh, the sons of God, fallen angels, saw the women of earth. I mean, it seems very clear that this, there's, not, there's more than one incursion. I, I know people disagree with that, but in my opinion, there's more than one incursion. Okay. And so what, th th this is the link between antiquity and modernity. That we're no, Jesus tells us to be like the days of Noah. And what we see, and this might sound a little bizarre, what we see happening with this so-called alien or extraterrestrial breeding program, which, by the way, has been vetted by men of letters and, and the scientific community. Um, we took a sample from the, well, one of the skulls in Peru with red hair. And the reason why we did that is because, first of all, these, these beings are not supposed to have red hair in South America. Indigenous people only have black hair. Right. So this is anomalous. We wanted to find out. It didn't look like this. It was a mummified skull. It was skull. a mummified skull. We wanted to see if it was a dyed human hair. So yes. we, we, took, we took the sample and we came back and Richard actually did this part. We put it into a machine that's called Raman spectroscopy. And we had four samples. And I'll let Richard go to the punchline. But the first <laughs> sample was a human hair. The second, uh, the second sample was a dyed human hair. The third sample was the red hair from our mummy. The fourth hair, and this is where we're not in Kansas anymore, a man had claimed to have been abducted. And in that abduction process, he had claimed to have sex with a hybrid being. I realize that sounds bizarre, but it gets even stranger. And we have the proof that this happened. When he awakened, he had the presence of mind. He saw that he had a blondish hair on his body. And he had the presence of mind to take that hair and put it in a plastic bag. Though that hair was the fourth sample. And what Raman spectroscopy showed us blew us away. Rick? What was interesting is that Raman spectroscopy has to do with molecular vibrations. And by vibrating molecules at, at different frequencies, it shows the, the substance that something is made out of. I don't totally understand the process, but that's how it works. So on the chart between the mummy hair and the hybrid hair, they track point for point on the graph, except for a slight difference in amplitude. And the only difference that was because the mummy hair was 2,800 years old. We need another hour. But I just want to say that right here on page 137 in L.A.'s book, you see what we're talking yeah, about. That's, that, that, that's the... Uh, you that's see the, the a red-haired... Uh, long elongated skull with uh, with b what's left of a red sca red headed scalp and uh, so there it is uh, you, by the way this book is loaded with pictures <laughs> that you won't even believe and and where where can i go from here except to say get the dvd get the book we'll be talking more about this in the future i'm sure guys have a good trip thank you Gary. thanks Appreciate for coming it. to oklahoma city glad you're safe glad we're safe okay and, by the way, thank, we thank all of you who are followers of Prophecy in the News and supporters of Prophecy in the News. Uh, thanks in advance for your prayers. Uh, perilous times in many ways, including hurricanes. Would you believe an earthquake and a tornado <laughs> in Oklahoma wow. City yesterday? They're called quake natos, folks. What can I tell you? <laughs> wow. Jesus talked about them, you know. He said uh, in the last days. I flew through the storm yesterday and, and saw it up close. Yeah, and it was a scary storm. It was. I hope you're all safe and sound and blessed of the Lord. But I would also uh, advise you, keep looking up, everybody.